name is Samuel Mbogwa uh, from Grandiwa Africa Limited. And uh, we are working in partnership with uh, Hand in Hand Eastern Africa to implement uh, these uh, livestock fodder units uh, to enhance uh, production uh, in different counties. Hydroponics is uh, growing crops without using soil. So the difference is just the media, the media that holds the roots together. Instead of using soil, we use uh, gravel, volcanic rock, uh, you know, and such things. Uh, for livestock fodder, this is just like class four science, eh? where we, we, you just germinate seeds. Yeah, so basically you're germinating seeds uh, uh, using water uh, on a surface, like the trays that we have here. So now the livestock fodder, the fodder is just the food for cows eh? or goats, sheep, poultry, any any livestock. Uh, so uh, as, I, as I told you, we are germinating seeds. So you do not need uh, a place that is very hot. Again, a place that is very cold. You just need a place where there is enough uh, warmth. Uh, like room temperature sort of thing. So that's why we do a shed. So on top we do iron sheets. On the side we put a shed net just to enhance good air circulation, maintain some bit of warmth within the structure. And then on the floor, uh, just to avoid the uh, contamination, we put uh, a, a black polythene. Uh, again, to avoid weeds uh, growing. Then we have our shelves, which are normally slanted in a way so that uh, when you water your seeds, uh, the, the, the excess water will drain off. So this is basically like we are doing what you may have heard called wheat grass. So the seeds we are using uh, are wheat seeds. Though you can use barley, maize, uh, soga, millet, and other cereals. So we just need, uh, the major, major thing is seeds and water. Uh, the first thing that happens is uh, you weigh two kgs of seeds uh, because our tray takes two kgs of seeds. Eh? And then after you weigh two kgs of seeds, you soak the wheat seeds in water for four hours. Uh, like you weigh two kgs and put it in a sack. Uh, this is a locally available material. And then you soak it in water. And as you will see, as you will see, uh, the water gets into the into the sack. So basically, they they will stay in that water for four hours. After four hours, you lift your sack. That. After the soaking, you will be doing uh, pre-germination, pre-germination or what we call incubation. So basically, it's just ensuring that your seeds are moistened, and uh, after 48 hours, they will be having some whitish radicals. Radicals are roots. Eh? So let me grab one. So you look at this one, it has a whitish roots and a, and a shoot. You just uh, lay them on the seeds, on the, on the tray, uh, and then you spread evenly. You spread evenly. Ensure that you leave a small gap here, uh, you know, like four inches, so that, you know, as you see with the other trays, the, the roots are expanding. So they might block the, the holes and cause some rotting. So you want to avoid that. Then watering, and then you water three times during the day, not during the night, during, during the day. Yeah, three times during the day, morning, lunch, and evening. Uh, then harvesting, uh, you, you harvest the fodder when it is four days old uh, for poultry. Uh, and uh, remember, 
We have uh, the two days we did pre-germination, so on the tray it will just have stayed for another two days. So you say it's four days old for the poultry. Six days old for pigs and rabbits, and eight days old for cows, goats, sheep, etc. Well, about storage, because the fodder is grown within a span of seven to eight days, eh? uh, as we have detailed in the procedure. So if you store it when it is wet, uh, since the fodder is grown using water, and the fodder is basically like 70% water, as much as it's a protein supplement, uh, you find that if you try and store it, uh, chances of it developing mold or fungi are very high. And that mold or fungi is poisonous to the, to the livestock. So we uh, normally urge people to uh, just feed fresh, produce only what you need, and don't overproduce. Yeah. Uh, at least one tray per cow per day. So basically the farmer should stock up around six trays. Eh? And then uh, if it is uh, chicken, the, the indigenous or Kienyeji chicken, uh, they can do one tray for every 50 uh, chicken. If it is the exotic chicken, like the layers and broilers, you do one tray for every 100. Yeah, so there are those uh, feeding ratios that we can uh, we, we can help them develop and understand so that they don't over overproduce or underproduce. The reason why you do the cereals uh, hydroponically is because you you want to supplement for protein. As you know, a kg of meat is more costly than a kg of uh, maize flour or wheat flour because proteins will always be expensive than the carbohydrates. So it, is, it has become very difficult for farmers to guarantee the quality of feeds in relation to protein. Because you know, you're looking for eggs, milk, and meat. All that is protein. So the feeds need enough protein. And the, 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 the feeds that have, the quality feeds are also a bit, a bit expensive, especially uh, you know, in the economic uh, times. Huh? So, uh, the reason you, you're doing all this is number one, you want to guarantee that you have enough protein. And then after, uh, after guaranteeing that you have enough protein, at least you have a control on the amount of uh, feeds that you're feeding. And uh, that also leads to a cost cutting by at least 40%. It could be more if you are formulating your own feeds. But at least 40% of feeding costs, you know, that one is saved and remains in the pocket of the, of the farmer. So basically, uh, if it is uh, cows, the, the, the cows are having increased milk production. That is more coins on the farmer. And also they are saving on the feeding costs. So, so it's even for the, for the chicken, they are laying more eggs quality eggs, the eggs are, have uh, good shells and, uh, you know, they are not as delicate. And also, they are, they are saving on the feeding costs. Yeah, so we were calculating the other day that a farmer who has a thousand layers will be saving around 38,000 per month just on feeding costs. Then if you guarantee the production of eggs, then it is even better.